Hello, Aston Villa fans, and welcome to For the Love of Paul McGrath podcast and another Villa AM where we try and originally we're supposed to be trying to do the news of the previous day in under eight minutes, but news is going to get a bit scarce in some days. So today we're going to take a little case study. It may not be right. It may not be wrong. I don't know what the situation is with it, but we'll take a little case study and try and learn together and see from the comments if I've made any mess, mistakes or mess ups in my calculations. And one of those, uh, one of the things we're going to do today for this little case study is we are going to take into account probably somebody that has that is featured in the news today, and that is because Leon Bailey is Roma bound. Uh, here we go, came from Fabrizio Romano, and he has gone to the Eternal City um, to play his trade there this year. Now, I suppose really the big thing, uh, the, the biggest piece with regards to this is, you know, that everybody's been asking is, it was a 3 million fee, and yes, there's a whatever, a, a 22 million uh, pound or 22 million euro um potential buy buy clause afterwards and stuff and everyone's going oh but like that's not going to be taken up well i suppose realistically the big thing here is we got to start to kind of change our mindset with regards to transfers from the big number obviously the big number is good don't get me wrong the big number is good but like changing our mindset with regards to year on year um moves that will affect year on year financial numbers is something that I found it really difficult to get my head around. Just go back to any of my Jacob Ramsey conversations and, you know, how distraught I was with regards to those, more so because of the fact that I always felt we were going to set him just to kind of tie us over from a PSR point of view. So the big thing that we need to try and figure out with regards to Leon, Leon Bailey is obviously the SCR stuff that I spoke about, percentages and things like that, that, that yesterday. That was with a view to getting people to thinking about what 5 million is as a percentage of revenue, what, the, you know, 312k per week is as a percentage of revenue and that's what we need to be thinking about if you are trying to going to try and figure this out but also there's another part to this and that's called amortization and essentially what is the book value that any player will have so that's something i pur- i touched on yesterday but purposely left out of any equations that i did and i'm going to have a crack at doing this today now for full ex- full disclosure this is heavily because you know me in numbers my math my mathematics skills are not great i took the uefa scr rule book converted it to a pdf converted it into a text document loaded it up to an ai bot called claude um so that it had the most recent information i then took leon bailey's tra- uh, transfer value and, and and his wage value well more so his transfer value and i input that into claude and i asked it to do the calculations and this is essentially what it spit out so one of the big things that it, that I was unaware of was the actual rules or the determinations that come into this. And the fact that this is determined, it's easier to determine this by using days as opposed to using years. So one of the big things is that a contract can only be amortized over five-year maximum limit. But if you sign a contract extension in the middle of that, you can then amortize the remaining portion of the contract. If you're still with me, the remaining portion of the contract can then be amortized out over those years. So we're going to have a crack at doing this. I don't know if this is done correctly. Any financial whiz kids, please let me know. But this is what Claude spat out at me. So the big things that they needed that they wanted to do was they wanted to determine the original contract duration in days using the date differences from the signing date until the date of the, the contract extension and then obviously from the contract extension up until the, the 18th of August when I'm recording this. The second piece they wanted to do is calculate the fraction of the original period elapsed until the extension and apply it to the fee to find the amortized and remaining amounts. The next part then that that was needed to be done was to determine the new extended period in days from the extension date, as I mentioned previously. And then after that was to calculate the fraction of the new period elapsed under the current date until the current date and apply it to the remaining value from step two to find the current book value. Sounds a bit complex. Essentially, it's date he signed to contract extension date. You get an amortization fee there. You deduct that from the overall transfer value, and then you get an amortization then based on the new length of the new contract extension on the remaining fee. So what that has also what that threw up was the following: that Leon Bailey was signed by Aston Villa on August the fourth, twenty twenty one. For a transfer fee, a reported transfer fee. I took a kind of a rounded figure here of thirty million pounds. On a contract expiring in June the 30th, 2025, which equates to 1,426 days. So I broke it down into days. Um, Where's the next one? Here we go. 
So then the remaining value at his extension, so when the extension was done for, for Leon Bailey and, and his uh, contract was extended on February the 12th, uh, 2024. So it was 922 days left, uh, had passed since he had signed his contract. So uh, the remaining book value at the time of the extension was £10,602,600, meaning that um, uh, 19, 19 million uh, 397,400 had been amortized previously. Okay, and that's the calculation below, which left 10, 10, 10.6 million, we'd say, was the remaining bit that needed to be amortized. So then what you do is you take the, uh, from the date of his extension, you take that 10.6 million, was it, um, and you uh, amortize that out over the, over the rest of the contract. So basically that 10.6 million then, as of August the 18th, 2025, which I, when I'm doing this, 553 days have passed since the extension, which results uh, in, you would use the, the 553 days since the extension, amortize that, the 10.6 million out over that point, and it results in 4.751 million being amortized. So the current remaining book value is there for 5.8 million for Leon Bailey. So that's his current remaining book value over the course of his the remainder of his contract all right so what does that basically do so when you're thinking about why would aston villa accept a three million loan fee like that's bonkers why would they do that you know and why if, you know he's going to come back to us he's going to be worthless that's the villa are only thinking about to the end of the end of this uh this year they're only thinking about the end of this financial year to get through what needs to be done and the reason that the loan fee would be set at three million is because Roma have decided to pay three million. They also have decided to, or they're also going to pay the rest of his uh, of his wages for the current year, which will give Aston Villa the following back, the following savings. So obviously we'll have a loan fee, which would be three million pounds. I think actually that's three million euros or three million pounds. Forgive me if I've made a mistake with regards to the denominations, but also in wages saved for Leon Bailey. Because he, they're going to pay the full amount of his wages, that's going to save six point two four million per year in wages. So, realistically speaking, even if we do talk talk about this being three million euros, which I think it actually is, that's about two point, roughly about two point four million pounds. When you add the two of those together, that's eight point six four million pounds, which would help to pay off his book value towards Aston Villa. Number one, and secondly, then you sell him off for that twenty two million euros afterwards. That's roughly what twenty million pounds, nineteen million pounds. You know, you can see where the profit into 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 future years potentially. If my calculations are flawed, if Claude the AI bot's calculations are correct, you can see why loan fees maybe being on the lower side to entice somebody to buy them afterwards are not the main big story. The big story is loan fees versus wage plus wages saved versus the book value that's remaining for that player. So sorry about all these mathematic kind of things. I know I'm not going to get them right. I'm not a mathematician. I'm not a stati I'm, I'm, I'm a borderline statistician, but I'm certainly not anything like that. But um, numbers are not my forte, and I really have to work on them and understanding of them because they're very complex. Um, maybe the Byzantines or the Babylonians had it correct where the Babylonians didn't actually have a zero entity within their within their mathematics. And maybe that might make it easier. I don't know. Uh, but I digress at the minute. But um, when we are thinking about fees, I suppose, really, this is what the exercise of last night and tonight are for. We're thinking about fees. Previously, we would have looked and gone, 40 million is what we need to sell this player for. But yes, 40 million is, is, is brilliant. And we would love to sell a player for 40 million. But the reasoning for why pay, why teams might accept a lower lower fee loan fees and wages saved is because they're looking towards the book value of that player over a certain period of years, and you know the book value that's remaining on um uh, on uh, Leon Bailey, you know now that he is gone as of today, let's say the book remaining book book value as per Claude the AI bot says. 5.85 million. Tell me if it's right. Tell me if it's wrong. I don't understand this, so that's why I had to use AI. But let's get the conversation going about amortization. Let's get the conversation going about SCR and percentages towards revenues as well. And uh, broaden the horizons, I suppose, of people that actually want to get to understand this. And uh, thankfully, we only have another 13 days to talk about this crack. And then we can forget about it again until January and get back to talking about football. So I failed in my eight-minute explanation, but we got it in just about 10 minutes. Thank you very much, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and all that's left to say is...